एही कार्यक्रम रो सह प्रयोजक हेले वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट्स माय सेल्फ बाणी प्रियदर्शिनी लेक्चरर इन जूलॉजी जुपिटर हायर सेकेंडरी स्कूल टुडे आई विल टीच यू ह्यूमन डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम सो व्हाट विल वी रीड वी विल रीड अबाउट ह्यूमन डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम So, first of all, before starting human digestive system, let's we know what is about digestion. Digestion is the process in which the complex food substances will be broken down so that we will get simple food substances. Let's have the diagram. Let's first see the diagram of human digestive system. human digestive system that is divisible into two parts first one is alimentary canal and second one is digestive glands so during the process of digestion what will be digested the food will be digested which forms the major component within the human digestive system the food contains different types of nutrients again the nutrients which are present within the food they may be divided into two different types first one is macronutrients and second one is micronutrients so macro and micro nutrients these are the two different nutrients which are present within the food and by the combustion of the food there will be the liberation of energy that helps in the process of growth and also doing all the metabolic activities which are operating within our body so which nutrients are said to be macro nutrients the nutrients which provide energy to the individual that is known as macronutrients for example carbohydrate protein and lipid they will form the macronutrients then what about the micronutrients micronutrients they will never provide energy but within but if there will be the deficiency of these micronutrients there may be a number of diseases so what are the examples of micronutrients it may be the vitamins it may be the minerals or it may be the water so this is about the nutrients which are present within the food and food is the major part which helps in the mechanism of digestion so human digestive system that is divided into two different headings one is alimentary canal second one is digestive gland so alimentary canal which has two openings in our case and because of which the human digestive system is said to be complete digestive system in some animals like in case of flat worm in the phylum platyhelminthes there is the presence of a single opening and that single opening serves as both mouth and anus and that type of the digestive system where the alimentary canal has only a single opening that is said to be incomplete digestive system but in our case the digestive system is complete digestive system because of the presence of two openings one for the intake of the food uh, that is known as mouth and another for the elimination of the undigested food material that is anus so alimentary canal which starts with mouth and it ends in anus so two openings are present 
because of which the digestive system is complete digestive system. First of all, the first part of the alimentary canal that is mouth. So, mouth is the opening that is guarded by two lips, the upper lip and the lower lip. The upper lip on its anterior side it contains a depression and that is known as philtron. If we move our tongue in between the lip and the jaw, we can see a space. That space is known as vestibule. That space is known as vestibule. So, vestibule is the space which is present in between the lip and the jaw. And the lip is attached with the jaw because of the presence of a muscular structure. And that muscular structure which attaches the lip with the jaw that is known as labial frenulum that is known as labial frenulum because the scientific name of the lip is labium. So, as the lip is known as labium, so the muscular structure which attaches the lip with the jaw that is known as labial frenulum. So, this is about the first opening of the alimentary canal that is known as mouth. Then the mouth leads into the next part of the alimentary canal that is known as buccal cavity. So, mouth leads into buccal cavity. Buccal cavity is the space which is enclosed by the mouth. The buccal cavity which is formed by a number of structures. So, what are the structures which are present within the buccal cavity? First of all, the roof of the buccal cavity, first of all the roof of the buccal cavity is formed by palate. Then the floor of the buccal cavity is formed by tongue. Along with that, the last sides or the lateral walls of the buccal cavity is formed by cheek and along with palate, tongue and cheek there is also the presence of tonsils and teeth. So, these are the different structure which are present within the buccal cavity where the roof is formed by palate, the floor is formed by tongue the cheek forms the lateral walls and along with these there is also the presence of tonsil and teeth. These are the structures which are present within the buccal cavity. So, first one is palate. So, palate forms the roof of the buccal cavity. Again the palate is divided it is divided into anterior hard palate and posterior soft palate. It is divided, divided into anterior hard and posterior soft palate, posterior soft palate. So, hard and soft palate, why some parts of the palate is hard and why some parts of the palate is soft? Because some parts of the palate is formed by the bony structure which makes it hard and some parts are without any bony structure. So, that is soft. The anterior part of the palate that is hard palate just behind the teeth. If we rotate our tongue, we can see that a number of folded structures like this, a number of folded structures or wavy structures are present just behind the teeth and those structures are known as palatine rugae palatine rugae. So, palatine rugae are the folded structure which are present just behind the teeth and it is a part of hard palate. Then the posterior part of the palate is known as soft palate where the end of the soft palate is demarcated by the presence of an elevation and that elevation is known as vula. So, vula is the part which is the demarcation 
uh, where we can demarcate that that is the posterior most part of the soft palate. So, this is about palate. The next one is tongue, tongue that is a muscular structure that is thicky that is highly mobile, but it is not, but it is not coming out of the mouth, it is attached with the buccal cavity. So, how the tongue is attached with the buccal cavity? The tongue is attached with the buccal cavity because of the presence of lingual frenulum. Lingual frenulum is the muscular structure which attaches the tongue with the buccal cavity. The tongue forms the floor of the buccal cavity that is not smooth. The surface of the tongue is provided with a number of elevations. Let us see the diagram of tongue. So, the tongue is provided with a number of uh, elevations and those elevations which are present on the surface of the tongue they are known as papillae. Those structures are known as papillae. Papillae are the uh, elevations which are present on the surface of the tongue. So, the tongue uh, on its surface contains mainly four different types of the papillae. Out of the four different types of the papillae, mainly in case of human, three different types of the papillae are present. So, what are the three different types of papillae? First one is filiform, second one is fungiform, third one is circumvallate form. So, these are the three different types of the papillae which are present on the surface of the tongue. Except these three types of the papillae that is and there is another papillae that is foliate, but it is absent in case of human. It is not present in case of human. So, what is about the position of this type of papillae and what is its function? Out of the, the mainly it is absent in human. So, let us uh, let us ignore this one because it is absent in case of human. So, let us consider these three types of the papillae. First one is the filiform papillae. What is the position of the filiform papillae? If we see the diagram of a tongue, this is the diagram of a tongue. So, in this tongue diagram that the tongue is divisible, the tongue is divisible into two parts. The tongue is divisible into two parts by an inverted V shaped structure. That inverted V shaped structure which divides the tongue into two parts that is known as sulcus terminalis. That is known as sulcus terminalis. So, sulcus terminalis is the inverted V shaped structure which divides the tongue into two parts. The anterior part of the tongue which helps in the intake of the food material that is known as the oral part and the posterior part of the tongue that is attached with the pharynx that is known as pharyngeal part. So, these are the two different parts of the tongue and the tongue is divided because of the presence of an inverted V shaped structure that is sulcus terminalis near the middle. There is the presence of a pit like structure and that is known as foramen siccum. So, that is the structure which is present near the inverted V shaped structure in its middle. So, the oral part of the tongue which helps in the intake of the food material and it also helps in the testing of the different types of the food that we are taking that is with a number of test boards. So, those test boards are present within these papillae. So, papillae are with a number of test boards. First one is the filiform out of the three different types of the papillae because foliate is absent in case of human. So, out of the three different types of the papillae that is present in case of human, filiform papillae is the smallest one, it is the most numerous and it is present mostly in the center of the tongue. This is the position where the filiform papillae are present. <coughs> These filiform papillae are without any test boards. 
Then second one is the fungi form. The fungi form papillae that is present near the tip of the tongue and it is with test buds and each test bud within fungi form papillae approximately each fungi papillae contains approximately 5 test buds. 5 test buds are present in each fungi papillae. Then the third one is the circumvallate type. The circumvallate papillae are rounded in structure and which are present near the sulcus terminalis that is the V-shaped structure. So, this number of the circumvallate papillae may varies in between 18 to 12 and these are with a number of test buds. Out of the three types of papillae which are present in case of human, the filiform is the smallest one and the circumvallate is the largest one. The circumvallate papillae whose number may varies in between 8 to 12 contains a number of te test buds. Within each circumvallate papillae there is approximately 100 test buds are present. So, the main function of the tongue that is to distinguish the test. So, which part of the tongue let us consider which part of the tongue is concerned in detection of which type of the test. So, this is about the structure of the tongue. So, the, the tip of the tongue which is present it detects the sweetness of the food. The anterolateral, the anterolateral part of the tongue which distinguishes the salty behavior of the food and only lateral which detects the soreness of the food and the last one that is the posterior most part which determines the bitterness of the food. So, these are the different test buds or test regions which are present in the tongue. And for the tip of the tongue which distinguishes sweetness, the anterolateral part distinguishes salty behavior of the food, only lateral distinguishes the soreness of the food and the posterior part of the tongue that is closer to the sulcus terminalis which distinguishes the bitterness of the food material. So, these are the different test regions which are present on the tongue. So, this is about the next part that is known as tongue. Then the lateral wall of the buccal cavity which is formed by the muscular structure and that is known as cheek. Then the last next one is the tonsil. Tonsil which is regarded as the lymphoid organ. Why it is known as the lymphoid organ? Because it is concerned in the formation of lymphocytes when there will be the time of emergency because mainly the bone marrow and the thymus these two are regarded as the uh, this is the structure of the tonsil. Dear students let us take a break. Okay, dear students, we are discussing about the buccal cavity. So, we have already discussed about palate, tongue, cheek. Then what about uh, then what about the tonsil? Tonsil, we are discussing about the tonsil. Tonsil is regarded as the lymphoid organ because it also helps in the formation of lymphocytes during the time of emergency because there are other lymphoid organs which are known as the primary lymphoid organs. For example, bone marrow and thymus during all the condition where there will be the entry of any foreign substance mainly the bone marrow and the thymus they help in the production of lymphocytes. So, they are regarded as the primary lymphoid organ, but except those two primary lymphoid organ there are also other organs within our body which helps in the production of lymphocytes that, that defend against the foreign substance during the time of emergency and out of those one is tonsil. So, what is the position of the tonsil? Just behind the soft palate the tonsils are present the inflammation of the tonsil will lead to tonsillitis. 
the tonsil is arranged in a ring like manner. The tonsil it con it is of four different types. First one is pharyngeal, second one is tubal, third one is palatine and fourth one is lingual. So, these are the four different types of the tonsils which are present behind the uh, soft palate. So, these tonsils which are arranged in a ring like manner, these four types of the tonsils are arranged in a ring like manner. So, the ring like manner in which these tonsils are arranged that is known as Waldeyer's ring, Waldeyer's ring. Waldeyer's ring is formed by the arrangement of the four different types of the tonsils. So, what is the position of the pharyngeal tonsil? So, this is the position of the pharyngeal tonsil. Then the next one is tubal which is present near this region, this is palatine and the last one that is lingual which is present near this area. So, this is the position of the four different types of the tonsils and they are arranged by forming a ring like structure and that is known as Waldeyer's ring. The next about the teeth. So, the next part of the vocal cavity that is known as teeth. The teeth which is regarded as the grinding apparatus because it has the ability to chew to grind all the food materials which are entering into the vocal cavity. In case of human the arrangement of the teeth is known as dentition. So, what is the type of the teeth that is present in case of human? In case of human the teeth are of different types on the basis of different factors on the basis of different criteria. So, you see the diagram of the teeth that is the teeth is divisible into mainly three different parts. One is crown, hello, 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 hello. Hello? Yes, um, I am myself Aditya Mopatra from Pune. Huh, huh. Hello? What is the question? Hello? Uh, what is the question? Hello? Mm, hello? Aditya? Huh. Okay. So, the next uh, part that is the teeth which is divisible into three different parts. What are the three different parts which are present within the teeth? The exposed part of the tooth that is known as crown and which we are seeing from outside. The crown is the exposed part of the tooth that is covered by a shining material that is known as enamel. Then just below the crown there is the presence of neck. Neck is present within the gum. And the last part of the tooth which is attached with the jaw bone that is known as root. So, these are the three different parts of the particular mainly these are the three different divisions of the tooth that is the crown, neck and root. What about the different types of the, the teeth which is present in case of human? Mainly the tooth which are present in case of human. The, those are classified, classified into incisor, canine, premolar and molar. So, these are the four different types of the teeth that is present within the buccal cavity of human. So, as the teeth are of different types, so in case of human according to the structure the uh, types of the teeth as they are variable, so human teeth is heterodont type, hetero, hetero means dissimilar. As the teeth are of different shape, different types, the human teeth is known as heterodont type. 
if we consider the origin how many times the teeth are being originated according to that basis the human teeth is diphyodont diphyodont means two type two sets of teeth are replaced during the life span of the human as that is diphyodont some are permanent and some are temporary so out of the uh, 32 teeth which are present in an adult that is within the age of 25 years when how many number of the teeth are said to be permanent and how are said to be temporary the permanent teeth number is approximately 12 and the temporary number of teeth in an adult is approximately 20 so in in an adult individual the total number of teeth is 32 out of the 32 12 are permanent and the 20 are temporary the temporary teeth is also known as milk teeth or deciduate teeth because it will be replaced by the permanent teeth uh, after some particular period of the birth so the four types of the teeth that is present in case of human that is incisor canine premolar and molar the incisor that helps in the cutting of the food materials the canine teeth that helps in the tearing of the food materials because as we are omnivores so this type of the teeth is more functional in case of carnivores and this is absent in case of herbivores so as this teeth is absent the canine teeth is absent in case of herbivores so what is the space that is known as that space is known as diastema it is the space which is present in between incisor and premolar because the canine teeth is absent then the next one that is premolar and molar these two are known as the cheek teeth because these are present near this region cheek teeth and that helps in grinding of the food material so this is about the functions of all the four different types of the teeth in case of human the teeth is heterodont because of different types the teeth is diphyodont because it is it is replaced two times <coughs> let's see the diagram hello 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 ma'am ha ah. hello ah, hello 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 do two types of hello ma'am do two types of part achi ko two types of hello so diphyodont means the teeth is replaced twice then according to the attachment how the tooth is attached how each teeth is attached with the jaw if we consider that on that basis in case of human the dentition is thicodont type because the teeth is attached to the jaw by a cusp or socket like structure a socket like structure will be formed on the jaw on which the teeth will get attached so this type of the dentition is known as thicodon type of dentition that is present in case of human along with that the human teeth is also bunodont type because the cusps are very small they are blunt and this type of the dentition is said to be bunodont so in case of human what is the type of the teeth according to the shape it is heterodont according to the origin it is diphyodont according to the attachment it is thicodont and according to the cusp or shape of the structure or 
cusp shape it is bunodon type of the teeth. So, how the number of teeth in case of human can be calculated? The new number of teeth in case of an adult human that is 32 that can be calculated by using dental formula. Dental formula. Dental formula helps in calculation of the number of teeth in an adult or in any children. How by using this formula we can calculate the number of teeth. So, what is dental formula? Dental formula is equal to half of the upper jaw, half the teeth present in the upper jaw, half the teeth <coughs> present in upper jaw by half the teeth present in lower jaw. So, in half of the upper jaw what is the total number of teeth and in half of the lower jaw what is the number of teeth. On that basis the dental, hello, hello, teeth in our total dental system, hello, hello. What is the function of wisdom teeth in our total system? Wisdom, wisdom teeth. Wisdom teeth is known as the last molar. Last molar is known as wisdom teeth. If we consider the dental formula, we are going to that. The dental formula is half the teeth in the upper jaw and half the teeth in the lower jaw. So, according to the dental formula, in an adult individual, in half of the jaw, the number of teeth is for this always the teeth will be uh, represented in this sequence. First one is incisor, second one is canine, third one is premolar, fourth one is molar. So, incision according to dental formula in case of adult individual, the dental formula is 2 by 2 by 1 by 1, 2 by 2 by 3 by 3. So, it means incisor in half of the upper jaw 2, incisor in half of the lower jaw 2, canine in half of the upper jaw 1, canine in half of the lower jaw 1, premolar in half of the upper jaw 2, premolar in half of the lower jaw 2, molar in half of the upper jaw 3, molar in half of the upper jaw 3. So, out of the 3, the last molar, it means the upper jaw contains 3 molar teeth. Similarly, the lower jaw also contains 3 molar teeth. So, the last molar teeth is known as wisdom teeth. Wisdom teeth is the last molar which is present in both upper and the lower jaw. So, the number of wisdom teeth in an adult individual that is the total number will be 4 because each half contains 1. The upper jaw contains one, the lower jaw contains one, this side contains one, this side contains one. So, the total number of wisdom teeth in an adult individual that is 4. So, by calculating the dental formula, we are getting the dental formula that is 2 by 2, 1 by 1, 2 by 2, 3 by 3. This is in an adult individual. So, how can we calculate the total number of teeth? Total number of teeth can be calculated by using the dental formula that is 2 into <coughs> that is 2 into dental formula 2 into dental formula which indicates dental which according to the dental formula the total number of teeth is 2 plus 2 4 4 plus 1 5 5 plus 1 6 6 plus 2 8 8 plus 2 10 10 plus 3 13, 13 plus 3, 16. So, dental formula is equal to 16. So, in adult individual, the total number, number, number of teeth is 32. But if we consider in case of children, the premolar is absent. If the premolar will be absent, so what will be the dental formula of the children? The dental formula of the children will be 2 by 2 
1 by 1 and this 3 by 3 will be 2 by 2, 2 by 2, 0 by 0. So, this is the dental formula of children in case of human because in case of children the premolar is absent and the last teeth that is the wisdom teeth that is also absent. So, what is the total number of teeth? 2 plus 2, 4, 4 plus 2, 6, 6 plus 2, 8, 8 plus 2, 10. So, dental formula in case of children is 10. So, what is the total number of teeth? 2 into 10 is equal to 20. So, in case of adult individual, the total number of teeth is 32, whereas in case of uh, a baby or in case of children, the total number of teeth will be 20 because there is the absence of the premolar and the last molar teeth. So, this is about the vocal cavity and which contains palate, tongue, cheek, tonsil and teeth. So, this is about the structure of vocal cavity. Then the third one, the vocal cavity leads into the next part that is pharynx. So, the next part of the alimentary canal, ok, let us take a break. Welcome dear student, where we are? We are studying about pharynx that is the next part of the alimentary canal. The first part of the alimentary canal that is mouth, the second part of the alimentary canal that is vocal cavity which is, which is with a number of structures and the third part of the vocal cavity, the third part of the alimentary canal that is pharynx. Pharynx is regarded as the common passage which is present in both digestive system and also in respiratory system. So, it is the common passage, it is the common passage which is present in both digestive system and respiratory system. But how the, there will be the digestion and respiration at the same time? They cannot happen at the same time. When we are taking the food, when we are taking the food, we cannot respire or when we are respiring, we cannot take the food. That is because the pharynx is with an opening that is guarded by different structures. For example, when we are taking the food at that time, the passage for the respiratory system that is known as glottis, that is known as glottis. So, glottis is the passage for the respiratory system and that is uh, guarded by a flap like structure or a leaf like structure which is known as epiglottis. Epiglottis guards the glottis when we are taking the food because glottis is the opening of respiratory system as respiration and digestion cannot happen at the same time. So, where we are taking the food, the respiratory passage must be closed. So, the passage of the respiratory tract that is glottis. So, how the glottis is closed? The glottis is closed by a leaf or flap like structure that is known as epiglottis. Epiglottis closes the glottis when we are taking the food. Similarly, there is another passage within the pharynx which leads into the digestive system that is known as gullet. So, when we are respiring, the air uh, is unable to enter into the food pipe that is because of the opening that is gullet. Gullet is the opening which is guarded by sphincter. Sphincter is the muscle fiber. Sphincter is a type of muscle fiber which mainly guards the closing and opening of some particular structures, mainly that guards the openings to close or to open. Hello? Hello? What is Hello? What is tubal? Hello? What is tubal? Hello? 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 What is tubal? What is? What is? Hello? What is? Hello, ma'am. Hello. 
हेलो हेलो एक्चुअली योर वॉइस इज नॉट ऑडिबल डियर प्लीज से क्लियरली हेलो हेलो ट्यूबल व्हाट इज व्हाट इज ट्यूबल ट्यूब ट्यूबल मींस ट्यूब लाइक स्ट्रक्चर एज द एलिमेंटरी कैनाल इज अ ट्यूब लाइक स्ट्रक्चर सो दैट द फूड इज अलाउड टू एंटर इनटू द नेक्स्ट पार्ट ट्यूबल इज अ वर्ड व्हिच इंडिकेट्स अ ट्यूब लाइक स्ट्रक्चर और अ पैसेज सो गलेट इज द ओपनिंग व्हिच इज रिस्पांसिबल टू गार्ड द ओपनिंग ऑफ द डाइजेस्टिव ट्रैक्ट व्हेन वी आर रेस्पायरिंग the gullet is guarded by muscular structure and that muscular structure which guards the opening of the gullet that is known as sphincter so this is about the structures which are responsible to allow the entry of the food into the digestive passage uh, and at the same time the air and the food they are unable to enter into the pharynx so pharynx is the common passage though it is the common passage but we can take food and air at the same time because of different structures the pharynx is divisible it is divisible into nasopharynx oropharynx and laryngopharynx so these are the different parts of the pharynx pharynx is divisible into three different parts first one is nasopharynx second one is oropharynx and third one is laryngopharynx so nasopharynx is the passage which is connected with our middle ear the middle ear con it is connected with our middle ear by a tube like structure so when will when we sneeze at a uh, large intensity we can feel our ear to be stressed that is because of the stretching of that particular tubular structure which is known as eustachian tube so eustachian tube connects the pharynx with the middle ear then the middle part is the oropharynx oropharynx is the common passage which is present both in the digestive system and respiratory system laryngopharynx the name itself indicates that it is the last part of the pharynx which is connected into the respiratory system that is larynx and because of which it is known as laryngopharynx then the pharynx leads into the next part of the alimentary canal that is esophagus okay <coughs> so the next part of the alimentary canal that is esophagus esophagus is also known as food pipe it is a tubular structure the wall of the esophagus is formed by muscular structures and those muscles are mainly formed by longitudinal and circular muscles so what is the function of the longitudinal and circular muscles which are forming the walls of the esophagus those longitudinal and circular muscles they helps in rhythmic contraction and relaxation the circular muscle helps in contraction and the longitudinal muscle helps in relaxation so this rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the muscles is known as peristalsis so because of the peristalsis the food that is entering into the food pipe that is esophagus it is allowed to be pushed into the next part of the alimentary canal that is stomach the length of the esophagus is approximately 25 cm it is without any glands it is only responsible to push the part to the next part of the alimentary canal so it is about the esophagus then the next part of the alimentary canal that is stomach so stomach which is regarded as the widest part of the alimentary canal which is present within our abdominal region so how can we distinguish which part is our abdominal region as we are mammals within our body 
there is a presence of dome shaped structure. This is the characteristic of a mammal. The presence of a dome shaped structure that is known as diaphragm. Diaphragm divides the mammalian body cavity into anterior thoracic cavity and posterior abdominal cavity. So, the stomach is present on the left side of the abdominal cavity. It is the widest part of the alimentary canal and it is a J shaped structure. So, what is the structure of the stomach? This is esophagus. Esophagus leads into the J shaped structure that is known as stomach. This is esophagus. This is stomach. The stomach is divisible. This part of the stomach is known as the cardiac part of the stomach. This part of the stomach is known as fundus. This part of the stomach is known as body and the last part of the stomach is known as pyloric part of the stomach. So, the stomach is divisible. It is divisible into four different parts. First one is fundus, second one is cardiac, third one is body, last one is pyloric. So, why the part is known as cardiac? Because it is closer to the heart. So, this part of the stomach is known as cardiac part, the funnel shaped part of the stomach is fundus, maximum part is occupied by body, the last portion which leads into intestine that is known as the pyloric part of the stomach. Within the stomach, the surface is not smooth, it is with a number of folded structures and those folded structures which are present within the stomach, they are forming rugae which helps in the grinding of the food materials and also in the mixing of the food materials which are entering into the stomach. Okay, dear students, <coughs> we will continue this topic in our next class which is going to be held tomorrow at the same time and hope we, you all have enjoyed this topic. कार्यक्रम सह प्रायोजक है